Hey guys, how's it going today? I was uh, working on a couple of photos and I thought it'd be fun to put a video together that outlines and shows some tips and tricks in Aurora HDR 2018 and, and highlights to me what I consider the power and flexibility of this amazing software. So uh, I've got two photos I'm gonna walk through. This first one is a street scene from Italy. And what I really wanna highlight here is the use of the lens correction and the transform tool. They're new, they're awesome, they're super helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here and do a couple of things. I'm gonna apply that and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do a little bit of this business. So let me see here, um, I gotta check my notes. Let's see, aspect, I'm going this way, yeah, okay. So uh, aspect sort of uh, either squishes the photo together or sort of stretches it out. So I'm stretching it out a little bit. Scale will sort of basically zoom it in uh, to fill the frame. Now the X and Y offset are really helpful because they allow you, on the X offset, you sort of slide the photo left to right, like along the X axis, axis and the Y offset's the same except for the Y axis. It'll slide it up and down. So I'm gonna scoot that over a little bit and I'm gonna scoot it, oops, I'm gonna scoot it down a little bit. So I think that about does it. But of course you can see I got a white spot at the bottom. So I'm gonna go into the crop tool and I'm gonna go into the three to two ratio, which is what this was shot in. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of that. Oops, not that heavy. There we go. And then I'm gonna scoot over like that. I don't really need the pipe that's over here, but I do wanna make sure I get those doorbells. That's why I scooted the photo over. And there you go. If you look at the verticals, let me show you the before. So the before, you can see that's leaning pretty hard. And let me show you the door over here. You can see the door is leaning pretty hard. This was shot at uh, like 25 millimeters. Uh, let me check. If you click on the eye, it'll show you. Yeah, there's 25 millimeters. So, um, you know, even with that, not super wide, you know, we got some some distortion basically and things that need to be fixed. In fact, I might would come in here and actually uh, straighten the photo a little bit, um, maybe a tiny bit like that, just a just a fraction. Anyway, the point is the Aurora 18 allows you to do these kind of things, which you could never do before. So you're able to go from kind of a tilted looking photo to a uh, a much uh, more aligned photo uh, in a snap, literally. So here's a tip for using these, these two filters, and that is um, these filters apply on the base layer. So when I apply them, I then add a new layer to make edits to the photo, which I'm gonna do next, and that's because if I make a bunch of filter adjustments here and then decide, eh, I don't really like them, and hit reset all, it's also gonna reset lens correction and transform. I don't wanna lose that, I got the photo aligned properly and I like that. So I'm gonna add new layer, add new adjustment layer. And then for here, I'm just gonna come in and, and make some basic stuff. Um, this photo is more about the, the vertical lines and getting those aligned. So I wanted to show you that. And then, you know, you can take advantage of all these tools to get the photo looking however it is you want it to look. Maybe add a little structure, bring up some of those rich details. Uh, but that's it, right? That's probably all I would do to the photo. So there's the before. Right now that's a single bracket or middle exposure from the bracket set, single exposure, tilted door, tilted walls, and finished photo, straight lines, details, shadows, everything brought to life and looking good. So that's how I would handle that photo and that's why I think lens correction and transform is a huge advancement for us that are using Aurora and it's great to have. And that's one of the things and one of the photos I wanted to show you to illustrate my point. So I'm gonna get photo number two, so hang on a second and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for hanging out. So this is photo number two. Now this is uh, a photo shot in the Canadian Rockies at Lake Louise. It's a gorgeous place. It's amazing and beautiful. You can tell by looking at it uh, that this is gorgeous. So uh, I wanted to show you the before and after. This is a middle exposure from the bracket set, and this is the blended HDR. Very natural looking. I think that photo actually like that looks pretty darn good. Uh, but of course, I'm gonna do some stuff to it because I can't help myself. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is replacing a sky. And this one's kind of fun. And so um, to be clear, this is art, right? So uh, I'm gonna go in single view mode, which collapses all these. Um, this is art, so I'm not going for realism here. I'm going for, you know, I guess you could believe that it was real, but you just wait and see. So hang on. All right, so let me get started. So I'm gonna add a new image layer, and I'm gonna add this night sky. And uh, I'm gonna get just let that copy over. I'm gonna reduce the opacity here so I can see. And, you know, maybe something like, you know, I don't know, 45% or whatever. I'm gonna grab the brush 
and I'm in paint mode and I've got the brush. I'm gonna paint that uh, sky onto this sky. So hold on one second while I do that. Let's see here. And let's just cover all this stuff up. Nice. Okay, now I'm doing a sloppy job on the masking, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and admit that right now. Uh, this is not a masking class on how to be precision. I can come in with the eraser, I can shrink my brush, but I definitely overlap the mountains a little bit. Uh, so I'll come through and clean up a little bit of that. But in reality, if I was doing this photo for real, I would take my time. Um, but I don't wanna waste your time watching me screw, screw around with a mask because I always and continue to see things that aren't great about it. And it is what it is. So along these edges, you gotta be careful and you gotta go kind of slow. And uh, I'm not being careful or slow right now. So, however, we just put a new sky in this photo and it looks pretty cool. However, hey, guess what? We got water and water reflects the sky, right? See how it's reflecting the sky here? Well, that means I gotta put the water, the, the sky uh, reflection in the water as well. However, let me show you. I'm gonna do this on a second layer, and the reason is, let me show you why. Add new image layer, get the same photo. The reason why is, look at the bottom of this night sky photo. It's all orange, right? So I had a decent Milky Way going, but I was shooting this on a beach. This is like five years ago, and um, you know, like the top half of the photo is not bad, and that's kind of what I use it for. It's not like a real photo, it's like a it's a replacement sky photo for stuff like this. Um, but there was a town over here and I just got way too much light pollution from it. So that's why I'm using a separate layer because I'm gonna drag this opacity. I'm gonna go a little bit lower because to me it always seems like reflection's not quite as intense as it is uh, you know, in the sky. So I'm gonna go like 35% and then I'm gonna get the brush and I'm gonna increase the size of that. And I'm gonna, oh, you know what, hang on. I'm not gonna brush it in yet. Um, I'm gonna grab the X offset. Remember that from the last photo? I'm gonna go this way with the photo. Uh, let's see. Something about like that and Y offset. Let's see. I'm just trying to get, line it up. So it takes a little bit of work and uh, you know I don't really know if I got it right. Oh wait, here we go. I'm doing something, so hold on, there we go. That's about what I wanted. Now I'm gonna paint it in. So grab the brush and let's mask this dude into the water. And again, this is not a precision masking job. I'm kind of going over those rocks, which probably isn't the smartest idea. Um, in real life, I would take my time and do a little bit better masking job. Let me show you. Okay, so that's that's pretty decent, all right? So I'm gonna, well, I missed a little bit over here. I always miss something. Okay, let's say we're done. So now you've got a reflection of the sky. Now, the reason I did the lens correction and the transform tool was because you see this little shooting star? I wanted to line it up here, right? Because, and I wanted to squish the sky down because it was only the top half of the sky that I really cared about. The orange stuff would look stupid. So I wanted it to look like that's kind of reflecting back there. I kind of did it, it's not amazing, but you get the point. So now what I would do is I'd go add a new adjustment layer and this is where I'd make some, some fun happen. And some of the fun I have is making presets and I'm in the middle of making a bunch. So um, I'm gonna stick that one on here and there we go. Now it's too much, it's like too blue and sort of too over the top. But let's just drop that, let's say, you know, 65%, I guess. That looks pretty good. Um, there you go, new sky. And it's a starry sky, and I, with the transform tool, I was able to line it up on both sides. So now there's a million things you could do to kind of make this photo better, and this isn't really exactly final. I would clean up some of the stars around here. Um, they're a little too blue, that sort of thing, but I just wanted to show you, that's what I'm talking about with this video, powerful and flexible. That's what's so great about Aurora 18, in my opinion. That's why I consider it a, a, an essential tool. That and Luminar by Mac Fun. That's where I spend 99% of my time anyway. But I love this lens correction and transform. It comes in super handy, and it allows you to do things like I just did with this guy and uh, like I did with the buildings in the previous photo. So that's it, my friends. I hope that it helps, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you would, please like, 
comment, share, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you following along as I uh, share my little photo adventures. And come back next time. I'll keep producing more stuff like this. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again, folks. Take care. See you next time. And adios.